en estos tiempos de fuerte polarización política en los Estados Unidos, cuando las votaciones, por ejemplo, en el Senado son prácticamente logradas por milímetros, con un voto aquí, un voto allá, ayer el Senado de Estados Unidos logró una votación por unanimidad, 100 votos a cero. Esto fue para revocar el estatus de Most Favored Nation para Rusia como castigo por la situación de la guerra en Ucrania. ¿Qué significa esto? Vamos a la ciudad de Washington. Ahí está David Smith, quien es el jefe de la corresponsalía del diario The Guardian en Londres. David, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. I just said to uh, the audience that in times where we have a deep, very deep polarization in the United States, in the political field, that we had, as yesterday, uh, 100 votes in favor and none uh, against. That's something close to a miracle, a miracle. And that's for revoke Russia's most favored nation. What does this mean, David? Um, I think it means uh, that, yes, there has been some uh, rare unanimity on Capitol Hill over the Ukraine-Russia um, crisis. Um, uh, I've been based in America for six years and probably the biggest theme uh, of my time is the divided states of America, huge political polarization perhaps symbolized by Donald Trump uh, better than anyone. Um, Joe Biden came into office um, <clears throat> promising to unite the nation and reach across the aisle, but perhaps you could argue Vladimir Putin has succeeded where Biden failed, and um, he has brought um, a lot of politicians uh, together. Um, it's not uh, total and absolute. Um, there are there's a, a small minority in the Republican Party who are saying positive things about Putin, and there, there was even a vote uh, where they broke ranks and were, were siding uh, with Russia, or at least failing to to support Ukraine. But they are in the minority, and, and generally it is a a throwback to the, the Cold War, where um, Americans realize their own differences are quite small when compared to uh, a major external threat. Dice David, en los tiempos que tiene acá, eh, luego de que Donald Trump por, polarizara de manera radical y profunda la, el escenario político en los Estados Unidos, este ciertamente fue esta unanimidad lograda en el día de ayer, fue algo muy, muy especial. Eh, después de esa polarización de Trump, recordemos que Joe Biden eh, dijo que quería conciliar al país, quería conciliar los diversos puntos de vista políticos, léase republicanos y demócratas. No ha tenido mucho éxito en esto, pero en el día de ayer sí hubo algo importante. Incluso es bueno reparar en el hecho de que si bien hay algunos sectores dentro del Partido Republicano, muy pro-Trump, que ven con simpatía a Vladimir Putin, estos son una minoría que no se hizo sentir de ninguna manera ayer. ¿Se podrá lograr otra votación unánime con relación a Rusia o quizá con relación a otros temas en el futuro inmediato? Once that we had that uh, result yesterday, David, do you think it could be another unanimously decision in the next future according to, with the Ukrainian war situation or any other one. What do you think? Um, I think uh, we, we will see uh, further unity on a range of measures. Um, but um, at the same time, Republicans never waste an opportunity Uh, score some political points. So uh, while they've been broadly supportive of uh, Joe Biden, um, they're nevertheless also making some criticisms that uh, he could do more for Ukraine or, or could do it faster, um, although they've been uh, haven't given many um, specific uh, details um, on that. Um, I think the difficulty for Republicans to criticize is that um, actually Biden's strategy has been relatively successful so far. He's, uh, he, he's given funding to Ukraine, he's given uh, many weapons, uh, military support, uh, but he's not actually got uh, the US uh, personally 
involved. We've not had any images of American pilots shot down. Uh, he hasn't provoked uh, Vladimir Putin unduly. And the, the, the good fortune, the success of Biden so far, of course, is that the Russian army has spectacularly underperformed. I think everyone's been surprised by the, the failures of the Russian military that's now withdrawn from Kiev. So while the atrocities are, are terrible and everyone wants the war to end soon, uh, Biden's strategy, I think, has been relatively successful. And, and that means uh, he will continue to have uh, general bipartisan support uh, in Washington uh, with, of course, some criticisms along the way. Let me plant something interesting. He says, no, se puede dar otra votación unánime, pero quizá no sea el caso. Y esto porque los republicanos no pierden oportunidad en cualquier momento que ven alguna fisura o una pequeña brecha para criticar y atacar, ir en contra de lo que plantea Joe Biden. Aún así, con este panorama planteado, eh, Biden ha logrado eh, sus puntos a favor ha enviado armas a Ucrania y ha mantenido el apoyo constante a Ucrania. Esto con la habilidad de, por ejemplo, no enviar los aviones eh, que se habían planteado, no tiene eh, la mala noticia de un piloto eh, norteamericano que haya caído, un piloto estadounidense que haya caído eh, por las acciones de la guerra. La situación es dramática, estamos en el día eh, 44 de la guerra y ¿qué puede ocurrir más adelante? ¿Qué más puede hacer Estados Unidos en general y Joe Biden en particular? David, today, Friday, we are in the 44th day of the war. Uh, for how long could this... Uh, go on, it's, uh, it's the question everybody's asking. But nobody has the answer, it looks like. What else can do uh, the US as a country, and in particular, what else can do Mr. Biden? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think the, the White House response to this is that they're, they've done a great deal already and continue to explore Um, all sorts of sanctions on the Russian uh, economy. Uh, we've just seen another wave of those, um, including targeting um, Vladimir Putin's uh, adult daughters, for example, and the family of Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, um, uh, targeting uh, Russian oligarchs, members of the elite, um, also the, the main uh, Russian banks. Um, and again, uh, that does seem to be having um, an impact in terms of... Uh, major problems um, in the Russian uh, economy, um, inflation quite uh, rampant. Um, I think much further than anyone expected. Uh, uh, it has really been isolated in a way that we've not seen with a major economy before. However, what's less certain is whether that will really undermine Vladimir Putin at home. And there is already anecdotal evidence that perhaps he's uh, stabilizing or maybe even becoming even stronger among the Russian population. And, and that, therefore, spells potentially a long war, maybe not so much around Kiev and, and leave anymore, but uh, certainly in, uh, in eastern uh, Ukraine. Um, but, you know, the other thing is in Washington, I, you're, you're hearing a little bit less now about direct uh, American or NATO military intervention. Um, there was some pressure on Biden to do that, but I think the realization that could really trigger a terrible conflict that spirals out of control. People talk about uh, World War III. So that still appears to be um, off the table. And again, I think the, the failures of the Russian military have perhaps um, eased some pressure there. But the bottom line is all of this remains unpredictable. And if we see very gruesome graphic images from eastern Ukraine, and particularly if Russia uses chemical weapons, then perhaps everything could be back on the table. Dice David Smith, esa es la, la gran pregunta para la que no tenemos una, una respuesta. El presidente Biden ha endurecido sus sanciones, ha ido eh, bastante lejos hasta ahora, no solo ha perseguido el, los más allegados a Putin, sino también su círculo íntimo. 
ha accionado, ha actuado contra eh, sus hijas, contra los llamados oligarcas eh, rusos, ha actuado contra los principales bancos rusos y esto, sin embargo, no se ha traducido en una merma en la actividad bélica y no se ha traducido tampoco en, el, en un fin de la guerra. Las retiradas rusas eh, obedecen a la, a, a la, al pobre desempeño que ha tenido el ejército ruso en la guerra y al desempeño, todo hay que decirlo, lo agrego, del de, eh, ejército ucraniano. Eh, el, la población en Rusia... Eh, mantiene el apoyo a, al señor eh, Putin, aparentemente no se han enterado de la gravedad y la dimensión de esta guerra y eso puede también permitir que Putin pueda permanecer cómodamente gobernando Rusia por mucho, por mucho tiempo. Y hay que ver entonces solo cómo le resulta su ofensiva en el este de Ucrania, donde al parecer se está concentrando toda la estrategia militar de Rusia. Veremos qué ocurre. David, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much. David Smith es el jefe de la corresponsalía de The Guardian, el diario británico en la ciudad de Washington. Una pequeña pausa y ya regresamos en conexión. 